weekly newspaper, Dateline St. Louis. The paper's actually been around for 51 years. It has never missed an issue. And what caught our attention was the publisher's single-minded approach to a single subject, where we began this evening, crime. Here's ABC's Charles Thomas. Hot off the presses, the headlines chronicle big city crime. Dope queen caught, two sisters killed with a curtain rod, and the mistress who fed him, loved him, and had to kill him. Scandal sheet, I just like it. <laughs> it's time again for the weekly St. Louis World Examiner, a 40 cent dose of crime and titillation on smeared newsprint. Investigating officers said Nelson was full of dope when he leaned over into Pringle's car to blow his foul breath into his face and argue about nothing. That's great stuff. The great stuff is the work of the world's 78-year-old publisher, Ben Thomas, who each week for more than half a century has done all his own reporting in his own flamboyant style. You know, that style might be beyond description. I say that because I've never seen or heard of anything like it in my life. It's a one-man crusade against crime, selling about 10,000 issues a week. Get caught with drugs, your name's under dope eaters. Beat your wife, and you might be listed under sweetheart mistreaters. From there, Ben Thomas writes his own version of how and why you did it. And sometimes he'll put your crime to rhyme. I am the epitome of much planned sin. I'm going to sell dope and drink my gin. Thomas makes frequent trips to the St. Louis Police Department to pick up mugshots and crime reports. These cops are longtime friends and, in the world, heroes in the war on crime. He certainly uh, draws the attention of the community to the job that the police officers are doing. Thomas says he's written more than 100,000 crime stories. He's fought his share of lawsuits, keeping the paper and his cause alive. I like to see the criminals caught. They might kill you, kill me, or anybody out there fooling with that dope. They're worse now than they were some years back, you know. That means the world will keep the headlines coming in one of the longest-running one-man shows in journalism. Charles Thomas, ABC News, St. Louis. And that is our report on World News tonight. I'm Peter Jennings. For over 51 years, my next guest has published the wildest newspaper, I think, in the country. He's from St. Louis. It's called the St. Louis... It's called... It's called the St. Louis World Examiner. Please welcome Benjamin Thomas. Fine, I thank you. And you? Oh, I'm doing all right. I, Good. I was very interested when I saw one of your papers. Let me show the people exactly what this is all about. Sandy, let me have, have some of that stuff I gave you. Now, this is called wife beaters and sweetheart mistreaters. <laughs> you tell on the guys who are either arrested or, or it, it, apparently rumored, I guess, that they beat beat their wives or beat women. Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> and let me see one of those others. <laughs> Now, this is a gun club. You tell about people with illegal weapons, people who have done illegal things with guns, people, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And the third one I had put up that I thought was very interesting, people who do drugs, you bust them. This has two parts. Your future if you're a dope eater, and then you put what drug they do. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> now, with that last one, we know that some of the uh, drug users can be uh, frightening people. I'm amazed that, that you're here and, and you haven't been hurt. Well, there's a good reason for that. They know I'm telling the truth. Okay. But I I've had friends beat up for telling the truth. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, I guess they're so accustomed to it now until they say, oh, well, it is factual, so we'll let it go. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. And, and you just put them right in the paper there, and they don't bother you. They probably like having their picture in there. It's like, yeah, I'm in the big time now. <laughs> that is absolutely true. I'll tell you what happened on one occasion. Mm -hmm. There was a uh, gentleman friend of mine who had to go to the penitentiary, and he was there, I guess, about five, six years. And when he came out, he came directly to my office. He said, Ben, I want to tell you something. 
I said, go ahead on, tell me all about it. Mm -hmm. He said, do you know that you have a lot of friends in the penitentiary? You might think you have enemies. He said, but you know what they like about you? I said, no, what is it? He said, you always tell the truth. Yeah. And you go up. <laughs> Now let me, I, I'm not sure if what I said was true, because it's fine. You go to the police station and get pictures and, and find out who's committing crimes and stuff like that? I do that every week, almost every day. Wow. Now, not only people who have been arrested, but I hear you also put people in your paper who are doing bad things and haven't yet been caught. That is true. <laughs> we have to try to catch up with them, too, you know. Uh -huh. Now, where do you get your information on that? Well... A, a lot of times you're out and you're around and you'll see some particular person who knows about another particular person mm -hmm. and they want an, a bit of exposure there. So they'll whisper to you, now look, thus and so and thus and so happened. Mm -hmm. I take my pen and make my notes. And then, knowing that that person is telling me the truth, you know, somebody I believe in, mm -hmm. then I go ahead and write that story. So it doesn't always have to come from the police department. So like, if you hear that, that uh, thus and so and thus and so, as you say, uh, who lives down there in East St. Louis, is having uh, big free base parties, and it's a reliable source, you print him up. If it is from a reliable source, I print it. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever been sued for libel for anything you put in your paper? I have been sued a few times. Mm -hmm. Not successfully, though. Oh, okay. So you always win. That's right. That's, that's great. And have you been doing this for 51 years? 51 years is correct. Do the police ever come to you and ask for your help? <laughs> well, truthfully, I'm around the policemen about every day. Mm -hmm. I go to police headquarters, or occasionally they might drop by my house, you know, something special they want me to get right away. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I'm down there with them. I go in narcotics, and uh, we have a big... I say we because I'm there so much every day. A big display there, this kind of dope and that kind of dope, and of course they kid me. So why don't you put your hand on some of that? I said, not me, as long as I live. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna put my hand on dope. Yeah. Then I leave. <laughs> then I will leave there, and I will go over and homicide. Mm -hmm. There, those fellows, they are out hustling to get those killers, and would-be killers, you know, and they, a lot of times, they have photos of them in advance. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been in some kind of crime before. Right. But if they haven't, after they are caught, then they get a picture of them anyway. So I'm going to get the picture one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put it right on the front page. Yeah. I think it's funny how you bust guys who uh, beat their wives and stuff like that. You just hear about it or the police tell you about it also? And uh, the police tell me about that. You see, they are called for peace disturbance. Mm -hmm. They'll go and they'll hear most of what is said and see most of what is done, except the little bit that was done before they got there. Mm -hmm. You know how people are oh, yeah. when they get all stirred up. Mm -hmm. They don't want to stop even for police. They'll keep on battling and going on. Mm -hmm. And the police takes, in, takes it all in, and then they just dump it right over to me. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so if there's some coward someplace who hit his wife in the face repeatedly, you put his picture in the paper. Make it known. Put his picture right in there. So he can't get no play nowhere. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one thing I have never liked is a man who beats a woman. Mm -hmm. I don't think they would put her to be beaten on. Yeah. And when they do that, I will ride them to the nth degree. Mm -hmm. I want to see them arrested, prosecuted also, and sent up for a little while in the workhouse. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm going to keep reading your paper. I want to. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Benjamin Thomas from St. Louis. For the first time in 57 years, the legendary crime newspaper, The Evening Whirl, has a new executive editor. Darren Horton is in our newsroom to tell us what this means for the paper. Darren. Well, Leslie, The Evening Whirl is a part of the fabric of St. Louis, and longtime editor Benjamin Thomas was part of the reason. But the man who is taking the reins says nothing will change. Anthony Sanders says the paper will continue to be the same whirl as it always has been.
Since 1938, it's been a lifeline to the African-American community, a place where people can get the skinny on St. Louis crime delivered with a twist, like describing alleged gang rapists as hyenas. Reporting crime, I would imagine, if you just did it like the police reports, it would be very mundane. And very few people would be interested in it. However, when you kind of color it, you know, it's amusement. Can I get a word of news, baby? In neighborhood grocery stores, they traditionally hang upside down. That's so people can't read them without buying. They've been read in every place from um, on the, the streets of uh, St. Louis to the classrooms of Harvard. And I think that speaks well. They have uh, uh, carved out their own little niche. And that's what you have to do in this world to be successful. It's eye-catching headlines and flashy writing helped the world build a weekly circulation of more than 38,000. Ironically, it started as an entertainment paper. But when founder Benjamin Thomas got an exclusive on a juicy crime story, he ran it. And the world as we know it was born. Today, it's evolved into the unofficial Bible of St. Louis crime. The police officers use it sometimes when they're looking for somebody to get information regarding the person. Uh, prosecutors use it. Sometimes you're looking for a certain individual that you might want to need as a witness. In addition to the entire St. Louis it, Board of Aldermen, Mayor Freeman Bosley signal. Jr. and it's Police it's Chief Ron Henderson are among the loyal subscribers. Well, and while Sanders plans to modernize, he says the heart of the paper will definitely stay the same. We plan to embrace other aspects of news coverage into the world, but we don't want to do anything that's going to harm the world as it is. And that's a good thing because the evening world is so popular that many in Los Angeles and New York subscribe, among the notables, comedians Eddie Murphy and Bill Murray. Reporting live from the newsroom, Darren Horton, News 30, back, back to you. Colorful is almost an understatement, Darren. <laughs> All Thanks. right, Dad.